Have you ever wanted to be able to play with some of the technology that we share here on the channel in the AI space, whether it's music or sometimes high-end animation and video, but you just don't have the hardware to support it or you just don't have the patience or desire to go through all the technical setup to get these AI applications working. Well, I have a solution for you today. Welcome back to the channel where we discuss the creative uses of AI. And from time to time on this channel, I share AI technology that I'd love for you to be able to run on your own computer or at least be able to play with in some way, but sometimes it's just not possible. The fact of the matter is the tech of most of this AI requires some high-end systems, a GPU that can sometimes cost a couple of thousand dollars just to be able to get the minimum required requirements to be able to run some of these things. So I understand the frustration that many people have when they try some of the things that I recommend and they say they can't run it or they're getting errors. And a lot of that has to do with the hardware that they're running it on. But what if I could make it easy? Let's take Comfy UI, for example. I show lots of workflows where we do all sorts of things like animative still image. Let's take this workflow here, for example. This is running here on my local system and it allows me to put in a still image here, hit this magical button here, and it produces this animation. This is using a technology called stable video diffusion. And it requires that you have all of these nodes in place and all the models required to set that up. And you also need a GPU that can run some of these processes so that it doesn't take all freaking day. But what if I could provide you with a link that if you click the link, you could be brought to a remote PC running this exact same workflow as if it was running on your system with none of the hardware requirements or the technical expertise. That's exactly what I'm going to show you today with Mimic PC. Now, I've shared other technology that allows you to easily install a lot of these AI applications on your system. But again, if you don't have the hardware to run them, that doesn't really do you any good. Mimic PC allows you to run some of the most popular AI applications out there, especially the ones in the creative space, on a remote system for just pennies. And it allows you to share your work with others in a way that they can just click a link and then be running the processes too. For example, let's take a look at what you can do here. Now, these are a few of the apps that are very popular in the AI space that you can access through Mimic PC. Automatic 1111, Comfy UI, which I'm going to show you here, Focus, Face Fusion, which we demonstrate a lot here on this channel, and RVC. Voice conversion is hugely popular here, and I can't tell you how many comments I get on some of these videos related to RVC with questions about the errors that they're getting that are, again, hardware related. What if that could be a thing of the past? Now, let's look at the pricing right up front. So there are several ways you can get started. They have a free plan where you can kind of test the waters a bit, but if you think you're going to be playing with these apps for a while, you're going to want to look into the hourly plan or the yearly promotion. Now, the yearly promotion is insane because of how many hours you get, way more than this. But even if you just went with about 50 cents an hour of compute time, if you want to figure out whether this is economical, I did a little search and you can validate this yourself. But if you were going to buy yourself an AI-ready PC with the GPU power you'd need, the average price right now is about $3,000. Okay, so let's divide $3,000 by the 0.49 cents per hour that you're paying for access to these computers. That's about 6,122 hours of access time for that same $3,000. What does that really translate into in real time? Let's say you worked an eight hour day and every minute of that time was spent on one of these PCs. So let's divide this number by eight. 765 is how many eight hour work days you would get with the same $3,000. If you take out weekends and work five days a week, that's about 261 work days a year. So let's divide this by 261. And this is basically about three years of nonstop work at your job on this computer for the $3,000. Now, anyone in the AI space knows that if you wait three years, you're gonna to need to upgrade anyway. So you could be on a system that's gonna stay upgraded for as low as 49 cents an hour and never have to buy one of these big expensive PCs. Just something to think about. So I wanna explain how this works from two points of view. One, as the end user, let's say you who doesn't have a computer like this and would like to use this service to run some of these things. And as the creator of the workflows, how do you get these things on this system? How do you share them? How does all that work? Well, it's super simple. Right here on my dashboard are all the apps that I have have created here on the Mimic PC platform. You'll see that I have several different Comfy UI setups so that they only have exactly what they need to run and not a bunch of models that would take forever to download and then not even be used. Let's do this workflow in order and look at the creator's point of view first. Let's say I'm working here on my local machine and I've created this workflow and I want to share it with you. Well, the first thing I need to do is save the workflow on my local machine. You can call it SVD basic demo, click OK, and just save that JSON file. So now in Mimic PC, I want to set this up from scratch for somebody else to download. So I'm going to click on add new app. I'm going to choose Comfy UI. 
and I'm going to click on Get Started. So you have a few choices for your hardware, and as low as 49 cents, which is all I've ever used, and it works just fine, but some workflows will require more VRAM. 49 cents an hour gets you a T4 with 16 gigs of RAM, and then the speed and the capacity go up from there to 99 cents or even $1.19. But if you just refer back to the math that we did earlier, you'll see that these are still amazingly good deals and give you a tremendous amount of access for the investment that you would make in the hardware that would do this. And if you were to go with one of these higher end machines, you would be paying way more than the $3,000 I talked about. So I'm gonna click Create and Start. So now we go through a few minutes of delivering the machine, getting everything set up, and then launching it. You're not charged for the time that this takes. Over here you can see the directory structure and if you're going to be adding models and things like that this is where you would do it and I will be showing you that here. You can close that by clicking this if you need the space. And I can tell you from personal experience they are extremely helpful if you have technical problems. You can communicate to them by just clicking this button here. Okay now Comfy UI has loaded up with their default workflow is ready to go. They have some models already loaded in so if I wanted to I could just click Q prompt. It'll load up this model run this prompt, beautiful scenery, nature, glass, bottle, landscape, and then there's our image. So now we want to bring the workflow that we did on our local machine up here and get it ready for you. I can either load that JSON file by clicking the load button, or I can just drag it and drop it right onto the screen here. In this case, I'll click load. And when I load it, I get the notification here that I am missing a node. Something that I have on my machine isn't installed yet on the Mimic PC. So all I have to do is just treat this like I would as if it was on my local machine. And for those of you who don't know, I'm just going to click on the manager here and click on install missing custom nodes. It will find the ones that we need and I just click on install. I will get the notification that I need to restart Comfy UI. So I'll just click right here, give it a minute, Confirm up here and then give it a minute to restart. Once Comfy's restarted, I need to relaunch this page. It doesn't have to go through the hardware and all the other time consuming setup. It's just relaunching that Comfy UI page. All right, now I have the page and the red square is gone. So what do you think would happen if I click Q prompt right now? Now remember, this is me, the developer, getting this ready to set up for you. I click on Q prompt and it tells me, oh wait, we don't have this model here. So we need to go get this model. I, as the creator of this workflow, know that that model belongs in the checkpoint folder in my Comfy UI setup. And right now we have nothing in here. So how are we gonna get this model in here? Well, I could upload it from my local machine because clearly I have it, but I wanna show you the other way we can do it is to download it from an online source such as Hugging Face. So if you go to the Hugging Face page where this particular file, this SVD XT Safe Tensors lives, there's a link right here, copy download link. I've copied that. I can go back over to my installation here. And I'm in the correct folder where this checkpoint needs to be. I'm going to click this button here. And now I can enter the URL, just paste it right in here, and click on Upload. Now it's going to take a minute for this to install over here, and then we're going to need to relaunch again so that it recognizes that model. Note that this is a 10 gigabyte file, so that's why it takes a little while for it to get over there. It would be nice if they had some sort of indicator for where we were in the download process, but they don't, but you just kind of have to trust it. But I did, and here it is. So now we're going to relaunch the app. All right, here we are back in the app. We'll just check the models list to make sure that it has been added. And yes, there it is. So we just choose that there. Now we can just drop in any image file that we want to animate. I'm going to choose this one because there's some motion in implied there and we're going to click Q prompt and see if it works. No errors yet. So it's loading the checkpoint which as we've discussed is 10 gigs and takes a hot minute. So this is a very good sign. We've got the image starting to render down here which tells me that this is successfully working. We'll go ahead and let this finish just so we can see what it does. Now admittedly this is a pretty old workflow. I do have a video that discusses the settings and so forth on this but this is kind of yesterday's technology but in terms of how to share these workflows Current. In my case, I sent in an image that was 1024 by 1024. If you could send in a lower one, it will, of course, take a little less time. You're seeing here that it is being resized here to 768 by 768. You can play with that as well. Other parameters you can mess with if you don't know too much about this to adjust your results are this motion bucket here as well as the augmentation level. But again, I would refer you to past videos to get more details on this particular workflow. And here we've got our final animated image craziness. Okay, so now I, as the creator of the workflow, am ready to share this with you. So what do we do? Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save out this preview because I want this to be the preview image for the application. So I'm just going to save this as preview spike ball. Now I'm going to go up here to save as image sharing. Now it says the save is successful. You can view and share the image in the application. Do you want to continue improving the image information and share it? Yes. We're going to click on yes. And this is now where I will take that video that I just created, drag it here. For some reason, it gives me two copies down here. I'm going to call this simple, stable video diffusion. And 
a little description. This is the most basic workflow for stable video diffusion. Load an image and bring it to life. Over here, you'll see that it tells you what models we've used, any extensions that needed. And now I can just click save. And here's my preview with both the images. And now that I wanna share it with you, I just click on the share button and I can choose how long is this share link for? A day, a week, a month, or forever? I'll say forever. Do you need an authorization code? Mm, nah. I'll click create. And now here is my link. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put it in the description of this video, and then you can click through and try it for yourself. Also check out the description to find out how you can get started with $5 worth of credit. That's like 10 hours of time over here by just clicking one of these workflow links that I've given to you. I will also send along the JSON file that you would load into this. If for whatever reason you load in the machine and it comes up with the default workflow instead of the workflow I provided, let's just give it a try. Here's the link that I've got down in the description. Let's see what happens. I've shared this link in a private browser so this will see me just like it would see you and not logged into the app or having an account or anything so you can see what's going to happen. So when you click the link you're going to be brought to this page. You can preview the animation. Now if you click on save it for me it's going to say hey we need an account for you to be able to do that and then of course you can just continue with creating an account. Same thing with apply. It's going to say well I can't apply it without an account. So you would use Google or whatever just to go ahead and set up your account. So let me click on apply. And I'm going to continue with my Google account. And then you're brought to this interface where you can choose what kind of machine you want to use. I'm going to stick with the medium at 49 cents an hour, which is fine. It tells you how much time you have remaining in your account based on the number of minutes you purchase. You can set how long the machine will last, how long you can actually run this workflow. And you can set it to automatically extend that time if you run up against the clock. You can also see your storage information here and you can click to upgrade if you're running out. So for now, I'm going to click on create and start. And this is what you would do too. So now we go through that whole process of delivering the machine, setting everything up, and then launching the application. As you're doing that, we can go over here to the models directory and jump into checkpoints and see that that model that we downloaded is included. So we did good. And it loaded the workflow right into Comfy UI, ready to go, ready for you to choose an image and place it in there. You didn't have to buy a GPU. You didn't have to set up anything. You just clicked a link and created an account. Here's another example of a workflow that I prepared here and then have shared up on Mimic. And it's just a fun little thing where you can type in a prompt and then create a 3D spinning animation. Basically just tell it what you want it to spin. A piggy bank, for example. Click Cue Prompt. It'll start creating a little picture of a piggy bank. And then it starts the longer process of creating all of these little images, which will become this animation. And then it goes through an interpolation phase, which smooths things out over here. I'm going to go ahead and stop this one for the time being, so I can show you one other way to just use this real quick. So to do that, I can click on View Cue and then just cancel what's running. If you have a picture already that you'd like to spin, and you can basically select all of these and click Control B to bypass them. And then up here in this load image node, you can just drop an image that you'd like it to spin. Con connect image here to init image here, and then just click Q prompt. It'll skip the whole process of creating an image and just go right to work to figure out how we're gonna spin this sucker. This shoe, by the way, was a 512 by 512 image and is taking about half the time to spin. Now it's generated our shoe images. Very cool to do that just based off one image. And here are the animations. So I'll have this workflow linked in the description below as well as the JSON file. So when you share these images, you'll find them under the My App Images. And this is where you're gonna get the link to share with people so that they can access these workflows. So for example, the simple stable video diffusion that we created, I would click here and click on Share. Click on Indefinite because I wanna share it with you indefinitely. I will not require an authorization code and then I'll click on Create. And now I have this link here that I will share in the description. And remember, Comfy UI is just one of the apps that you can use here. In particular, I invite you to check out Face Fusion and RBC because these are things we talk about and will continue to talk about for a good bit on this channel. And for you to be able to use the face swapping and the voice cloning tools we talk about here without any sort of hardware restrictions would be fun. So have you done the math in your head to decide whether or not this might be a way to go to get started in the AI world until that time comes, if you decide it should ever come, that you would invest in the hardware necessary to run this stuff locally. It's a great way to play with things. You can do a pay as you go so you're not out of pocket hardly anything to work with this stuff and see if this is something you want to invest more time and energy into. So if learning about all of these AI tools is something that you're interested in, why not subscribe to the channel? Because this is the type of thing we talk about all the time. If you subscribe now, I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you do not, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will...